and we're live guys welcome to another episode of good morning crypto only here only on ivan on take and of course we are broadcasting live straight out of Stockholm, Sweden. And today we're talking about whales because, uh, you know, maybe it's whale season once again. Because you realize that one institutional whale actually owns 1% of all Bitcoin. And that is quite interesting. And that is also a very clear sign of institutional interest and that we're only beginning. That is news number one. News number two, we're going to discuss the fact that China actually wants to have an independent currency. Basically a currency that is independent from all nation states, that is not tied to any specific nation state. Which is of course quite interesting as well because you realize that there are such currencies today, such as Bitcoin, such as Ethereum and many others. And uh, the fact that China is now afraid to hold dollars because they think that dollar might hyperinflate is a very interesting movement as well in the industry of finance as a whole because we're really seeing a paradigm shift in the world. And then we have other news as well, of course. So guys, it's amazing to see you here, smash the likes and as you can see the bear market the bear market is so strong that it has made it to my coffee mug. We have a bear right here and it's a clear signal that we're deep inside the bear market. Let me, let me know how the bear market is doing, by the way. Uh, let me know how uh, your portfolios are doing. Are they like 80% red, 90% red, 50% red? Let us know. Let's drink some coffee. And of course, do not forget to... Uh, visit christmas.ivanotech.com if you haven't because we have a christmas deal you can get access to all of our academy for one dollar for the first month uh, of course our courses are very very high quality 10 hour plus on each course deep fundamentals all about bitcoin ethereum how they really work smart contract programming we teach you programming from scratch it's teaching you programming from scratch on Ethereum, NEM, and EOS. Then we have some business action going on. And next year we're releasing this course, which is game programming. Also, looking at the market, we have the following situation. Uh, we have minus 0.5% in... Uh, uh, Bitcoin, we have 2.02% uh, .02 in Ripple. Red, of course. Uh, Bitcoin Cash, minus 10%. Actually, Bitcoin Cash has reached its all-time low. All-time low from... Uh, uh, if you compare it to Bitcoin, uh, it has never been this low. I think it's about 3% or something nowadays. Uh, so minus 11% in Bitcoin Cash. And of course, a lot has to do with uh, the split, with Bitcoin Cash versus Bitcoin Cash Satoshi's vision. And some exchanges don't even have uh, Bitcoin Cash anymore. They only have Bitcoin Cash ABC and Bitcoin Cash SV. So Bitcoin Cash as a name is not even used on all exchanges, which is, of course, a huge blow to the ecosystem of Bitcoin Cash. And big winners, you have Polymath, you have Fact. Fa uh, let's look at the big losers because I want to see if this free coin crashed. Uh, maybe it didn't uh, because we saw this huge pump and dump yesterday. Uh, at least the pump was yesterday. And so talking about the topic, uh, many people are discussing nowadays the fact that there is one whale that owns 1% of all Bitcoin. And that whale has been accumulating all of that Bitcoin uh, throughout 2018. So this year has been a very painful year for many investors in cryptocurrencies. But also this year has been a very tremendous year for many other investors that were sitting on the sidelines, sidelines waiting to get in. And such an uh, entity is uh, Grayscale. Because Grayscale is... Uh, Oops, is now uh, sitting at 200,000 Bitcoin, an amount which is approximately 1% of all Bitcoin. And this is very, very, very significant, according to me at least, because you realize that it's all about entering when there is blood on the streets. And here's a clear example of that, that they had... 170,000 worth of uh, Bitcoin at the end uh, of January and then they just increased, 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 increased and increased and now they're at uh, 203,000 Bitcoin. And also something else that is interesting is that their shares, so uh, Bit uh, Grayscale's Bitcoin Investment Trust and its shares are the first publicly quoted securities solely invested in uh, in the deriving value from price of Bitcoin. And they are trading at a 22% premium. So institutional investors actually want to pay a premium in order to trade at uh, grayscale instead of just buying Bitcoin uh, on the market, just normal Bitcoin and holding normal Bitcoin. 
So uh, there is a clear demand for using these uh, financial products that uh, entities such as Grailscale offer. And 22% premium is of course a huge premium that uh, these uh, uh, institutional investors are paying that are interacting and doing business with Grailscale. And you know, you realize that this is something that will just become more common and common. Uh, especially when you have news like this coming out, that China calls for a new reserve currency. Especially when you see big movements in the world where the fiat system is clearly undermined and where the fiat system is losing its uh, positions, which will only accelerate in the future if we continue to build our economies on debt. Everything is based on debt. And China is now actually worried that uh, the US dollar might collapse and uh, they are saying that, hey, you know, we want a reserve currency, completely new reserve currency that is disconnected from individual nations and is able to remain stable in the long run, uh, thus removing the inherent deficiencies caused by using credit-based national currencies, credit-based national currencies, everything is based on debt. And so, this is a clear sign that China, as the largest holder of the US dollar financial asset, is concerned about the potential inflationary risk of the US Federal Reserve printing money. Because you realize when people are looking at the US national debt, and it is just increasing and increasing, and trillions and trillions are building up, uh, I mean, you have to ask yourself, will this ever be resolved? And when you reach a point of no return, the only solution might be to print money. And this is something that China is now realizing. And this is something that China is now worried about. Uh, I'm sure they have realized this long ago, but uh, now it's reaching such a critical point that they are actually ready to take some action and are now speaking publicly about the fact that we need to do something about this issue. Uh, however, what they suggest is that IMF should control this uh, global currency. So they say that global system should be controlled by international monetary fund because they want it to be super stable and uh, someone to be in control. But at the same time, we need to realize that we're kind of moving the uh, dependency. Now you're dependent on the US government to really hold the US dollar in uh, reasonable supply and not hyperinflate. But if you just move it to an international money monetary fund, that is also a very central and a very clear dependency. Because who knows who will control inter international monetary fund in the future? Who knows what kind of interest people in charge will have uh, at international monetary fund? And uh, who will be behind those people? And so, of course, when you see these tendencies, such as China, when they're clearly saying we need a new global currency that is not tied to any nation, Clearly, cryptocurrencies is the superior solution. Instead of having some new system that is based on international monetary fund and is tied to international monetary fund, uh, you need something that is very, very separated. And you realize also that this is uh, news from 2009. And also, this is something that is being discussed more and more the more people are discovering cryptocurrencies and the more people are talking about this issue. And for many years, this has just been ignored. And this is not something that people have been discussing. And so, now that cryptocurrencies is a viable option and you see news such as this with uh, Grayscale and more institutional investments, there is a clear solution right now for this issue. There is a clear solution. And looking also at the future of cryptocurrencies, when you have these issues in the monetary systems, when you have now countries that even 10 years ago expressed these concerns and now these concerns are even 10 times more uh, alerting, 10 times more pressing, it is uh, it because to a large extent because we're due to another economic uh, uh, crisis. You, if you listen to Ray Dalio, the founder of Bridgewater, he is always speaking about the fact that now we have a new cycle coming to an end, a new global macro cycle coming to an end. And he's always speaking about temporary cycles, kind of short term business cycles, and then long term cycles that go through centuries. And according to Ray Dalio, now we're closing the both the short term cycle is coming to an end, which is basically 10 year cycles. And then the long term cycle is also coming to an end, which is century long cycle.
And I think it is a perfect opportunity to really use cryptocurrencies for good, really use the power of cryptocurrencies. But of course, we'll see how it plays out. We see how this uh, really goes forward and what kind of actions will be taken by uh, nation states. So let me know what you think, guys. Let me know what you think about this particular issue and what this is going to uh, lead to. Fabrice is saying, why people pushing Satoshi's vision? Probably ignorant investors. Uh, I, I really don't see any, uh, any reason to... You know, of course, you have Craig Wright, you have Calvin Iyer, but at the same time, it really shows that uh, it is a lot of talk and that there is really no action. I mean, what happened to Sharkpole? What happened to all of these threats? Because we've been covering uh, the developments with Bitcoin Satoshi's vision on this channel a lot. So I definitely agree with you there. Uh, China is not printing money. Of course they do. Everyone does. But now they're so dependent on the US dollar as well. Uh, it's old news, but there are recent talks between China and others to get it going soon. That's why he's talking about it. Yes, exactly. Although this is from 2009, you realize that, that with the current trade war going on between the US and China, now that you realize the fact that the US debt is still going, uh, you know, higher, higher and higher, and you also ask yourself the question, what will happen to that? What will be the final solution? And you also realize the fact that there is a clear alternative right now. There's a clear alternative to the entire uh, old system. Uh, anyway, that was news number one. Uh, Bitcoin is not very stable, so I don't think it will be reserve currency anytime soon, says Kalpesh. Well, Bitcoin is not really stable because it's so small. Because it's so small economy and because it's so small uh, ecosystem, of course, it's easy to manipulate prices. But in the long run, Bitcoin will become stable. It is not some kind of inherent bug in Bitcoin that makes it unstable. Just like any small market where you have few players and when you have uh, a relatively low volume, if you compare to, to uh, traditional markets, it is just natural for it to have huge swings. Uh, next up, we have another news that has to do with uh, the US and uh, kind of the freedom of speech. Because I saw this interesting article from March and uh, it's all about why America can't regulate Bitcoin. And this is something that comes up over and over again. The fact that people are asking, hey, is the US able to uh, to regulate Bitcoin. It, are they able to ban it? And so this article suggests that it's not really possible because Bitcoin is just communication. And basically what they say is that because Bitcoin can be printed on paper, I mean, I can print a transaction, a Bitcoin transaction on paper, and I can send it to you, and there is no way to censor that. There is no way to censor written speech. And basically they give an example from 1995. In 1995, you had the situation where there was a law that restricted the export of encryption software. So there was some kind of strange law that said that you're not allowed to export encryption software products from America without a license. However, you had this uh, uh, standard called PGP, pretty good privacy. Uh, it is a wonderful standard, but at the same time, it's not really used. PGP could be used for emails, and it is used for emails by, by people who really care about their privacy, that you can encrypt your emails. There are also, uh, also other use cases, but you realize that this was the first version of the breakthroughs in public key encryption. And nowadays it is, as I mentioned, used in emails, among other uh, aspects. And the, it was illegal to export it. And so people found it on the internet, but you know, spreading this through the internet was uh, illegal. So instead they just printed all, uh, you know, copies of PGP on paper that looked like this and shipped it to other countries because you cannot make shipping of written text illegal. Now, I'm not a lawyer that knows everything about the American constitution. Maybe someone can correct me on uh, in the chat, but my understanding is that because of the first amendment, because of uh, how the constitution is laid out, because something can be written on paper, because something is kind of, you know, free speech, it's not uh, possible to censor it. And basically the article makes the claim that because Bitcoin is also something that you can print on paper, I mean, theoretically, we, I can send you a text message with a Bitcoin transaction. I can send you a, you know, Skype message with my Bitcoin transaction. And of course, I can send you a paper with my Bitcoin transaction. It is 
uh, constitutionally not possible to ban Bitcoin. At the same time, uh, it, it, to me, it also seems that we're looking at technicalities. I mean, yes, if I send you Bitcoin transactions on paper, uh, they will not be able to stop, st stop it. But at the same time, practicality is not really there. I mean, who will be really sending Bitcoin transactions on paper? If you really have to, you will do it. But normal day-to-day -day people will not. But still, you know, I thought this was an interesting point to bring up that Bitcoin is a language. Bitcoin is communication. Bitcoin is uh, text. It is text. And therefore, banning Bitcoin is just uh, insane. You cannot ban it. You can make it hard to use. You can make it so that people that use it might get in trouble. But banning it is impossible because it is a protocol and it is a language between machines. And it is so important to understand the, the nature of this technology. It is not something that you can just say, hey, now we're banning Bitcoin. It's like it's like banning English language. It's like banning, you, you know, Russian language or something. You could try to do it. I mean, uh, you could try to say, hey, it's illegal to speak English or it's illegal to speak, uh, you know, German or whatever. But banning it would simply be impossible. There is no way to erase a language. And so finally, what we want to uh, raise uh, in the stream is uh, uh, this news. The fact that DHS wants to track Monero and Zcash transactions. Uh, Obviously, you understand that it is extremely hard to do. And uh, mathematically, currently, with the current uh, systems we have, with the current computational power we have, with the current computational capabilities we have, I would say it's uh, impossible. It's practically impossible. You know, theoretically, there, this is an important point to, to make, that theoretically, all encryption is uh, possible to crack. Theoretically, there is a way to crack uh, the the encryption used on the internet. Theoretically, there is a way to crack the encryption used in banking, the encryption used in Bitcoin, the hashing functions used in Bitcoin. Theoretically, everything is hackable. But at the same time, uh, although it's mathematically possible to crack everything, it will take trillions of years. It will take billions of years. And so practically, it is impossible. So whenever you say that, hey, it's impossible to crack this encryption, you really mean that it is possible theoretically, it is impossible practically. And so currently it is theoretically possible to track all privacy coins, but practically it is impossible. <laughs> but so what the DHS wants to do is that they want uh, help to track cryptocurrencies, uh, <laughs> which is quite interesting. Uh, on November the 30th, Department of Homeland Security uh, released uh, basically topics for this innovation program they have. So the SBIR program provides an opportunity for innovative small businesses to find solutions that meet technology needs for departments, operational components, and the nation's first responders. So it seems to be some kind of competition. They're basically saying, hey, we have these problems, we have these challenges, we have these tasks, can you help us solve it? <laughs> and, and then they ask businesses to kind of come and help them. <laughs> and now, one of the topics is that, uh, you know, we need to decide, design a product to support the implementation of blockchain-based forensics, data analysis, and information sharing. And they also have several phases here, that in phase one, these small businesses, that these small startups, innovation businesses, should design a blockchain analysis ecosystem or modify an existing one that enables forensic analysis for cryptocurrencies such as Zcash and Monero. And you know, with time, I think it will be possible to crack Zcash and Monero. It is just a question of time be before we have that technology. It's just a question of time before we can actually follow all of the transactions. But, you know, whether it's in 20, 30, 50, 100 years, who knows? Uh, but technology is always moving forward. And the top-notch encryption you had 50 years ago is, of course, uh, not worth a lot today. If you think about Enigma, the German uh, encryption machine that was so hard to crack, and you had Alan Turing fighting to crack it for years, and then he finally succeeded with his team. I mean, Enigma nowadays is not that complicated, and it's, you realize it's quite trivial technology today. So the same is with 
Zcash the same is with Monero. Today it is practically impossible, but theoretically possible. As we mentioned, always there is always a theoretical chance to crack encryption. If you just brute force, you can just try different combinations or you can use algorithms. But currently those algorithms are so slow, it also takes billions of years to crack a simple encryption. But you know, in 50 years, it might well be the fact that it is both theoretically possible and practically possible. And so this is something that Fluffy Pony, the creator of, uh, uh, in, not the creator, but the main contributor to Monero, told on this channel as well when we had the interview with him. And uh, he basically mentioned that, hey, in the future Monero might be tracked and you can see all the transactions. But in the future Monero will also have a new algorithm that is strong enough. But past transactions that we do today might be discovered in the future. So something to realize and something to keep in mind. Uh, Ivan, please talk about smart city with blockchain, Walt on chain. What do you want me to say? I need to learn more about smart city project with Walt on chain. Maybe, maybe you can educate me instead. I mean, with all of the things going on in crypto, really, it's very hard to keep up with every single project every cryptocurrency is doing. But you know, if you think that smart city project with Walt on chain is nice, I will check it out. Uh, Next, we have a happy, happy, joy, joy selling, saying grayscale gray, gray is the indicator investment. The retail investors are dumping right into institutional hands. Yes, because, uh, uh, yeah, institutions are smart. Most people that are in crypto, I mean, if they entered in November, they entered in January, a lot was on emotion. A lot, a lot was on just FOMOing in. And, you know, don't get me wrong. I, I also FOMOed into cryptocurrencies back in 2013. And I think everyone who enters crypto at, you know, one stage or another, they FOMO in. So FOMO is an inherent part of getting into crypto. <laughs> but institutional investors, of course, they are way smarter when they are entering a market. But retail investors, I mean, when normal people people hear about an investment opportunity, a lot has to do with FOMO. So I do agree with you. And it is unfortunately how the world works, that uh, uh, retail investors make decisions based on emotion, based on greed, based on, hey, let's get rich tomorrow, while institutional investors are uh, often more uh, experienced and know what they're doing. Uh, do you think is the bottom? <laughs> I mean, to me, number one, I don't really know. If it's bottom or not, it feels that we will go lower. It feels that, you know, it. Th this might take years. Because as I told you, I FOMO'd into cryptocurrencies in 2013. I bought at the very peak. It was 1100 for one Bitcoin. I'm like, Let let's go. <laughs> let's get into crypto. And then everything crashed to 200. And then you realize that uh, it took several years to recover. So who knows how long it will take. Uh, Ivan, what about EOS is not a blockchain? Well, we have covered that. We have covered that. Uh, just Google, you know, EOS not a blockchain, Ivan on tech or something. I, I've done a whole video on that. And it is like, you know, one hour or something. Mikhail, Mikhail Petrov. So check that out. But my conclusion to you, if you don't want to check the whole video, my conclusion to you is the fact that... Uh, all blockchains that are not proof of work are not really blockchains. I mean, yes, you can you can say they are kind of blockchains, EOS is kind of a blockchain, but everything that is not proof of work, according to me, is not a real blockchain. Uh, so that is how I see it. Hello, Ivan, could you please review you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you bakes people have been r writing a lot. Yeah, I FOMO'd in after 2013 as well. It was frustrating to be buying and then the price would drop. <laughs> yeah, I know. That is how it is. Got in 2015, uh, didn't get enough. Ivan, what's your favorite crypto? I'm sorry to be boring, but Bitcoin is my favorite crypto. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I don't know if you want if you wanted me to say that I have some kind of you know crazy altcoin, but uh, Bitcoin is my favorite cryptocurrency and has always been. What do you think about ETC? Team is cap capitulating. ETC is a scam. Uh, personally, I have zero interest in ETC. Uh, I think they will survive. I suppose there will always be someone who wants to drive the project forward, but I have never had a lot of interest in ETC. It's just that. You have Ethereum moving forward at such a speed and ETC lagging behind and I don't really see a need for ETC and Ethereum at the same time. I mean, I do understand the ideological 
point that we should not have rolled back the DAO hack and basically fixed the DAO hack. I do get it, I do sympathize with it, but you know, to have an entirely different Ethereum, I don't really see the point of it. Um, maybe they should have rebranded, maybe that is something that uh, would have helped them because they had to rebrand. They had to rebrand from Ethereum to Ethereum Classic. And I feel that it kind of crippled the whole project because how exciting is really Ethereum Classic? It is just like Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash. I mean, at least choose another name because Bitcoin Cash inherently is somehow is you know some some kind of crippled brother of Bitcoin. And Ethereum Classic, just by the name, just by the feeling of the name, is some kind of crippled brother to Ethereum. So in that sense, uh, I, I I feel that it's just uh, yeah uh, I, I don't know, Alex Borisov. You never answered my paid question last time. Yeah, so guys, I really appreciate you you kind of sending donations, but I, I cannot promise I will answer all of them. Uh, because sometimes I'm speaking, sometimes I'm explaining something, and sometimes paid questions are just advertising. Someone is like, hey, ch check this out, ch check this coin out, or check this project out. Uh, but I'm sorry if I missed some kind of question that was good. I'm making a living s nice selling t-shirts. You spoke about Zcash... And Monero, look at Dero. All right, all right. Will ne will I need a special license to drive my Lambo <laughs> to the moon? <laughs> uh, probably, probably. <laughs> Ivan, what's your opinion on on M is uh, MCO? I don't know what that is. Uh, MCO pay dividends. Uh, it, uh, tell me what it is. Many hedge funds and institutions have been entering cryptocurrencies and are speculating silently and at the same time spreading fud in the media true true uh, of course when they enter they enter through otc so they don't really move the price and they don't really have the issue with the fact that if they buy you know one million worth of bitcoin two millions worth worth of bitcoin the price will skyrocket so in that sense they can do it quietly and then they can fud even more and get in even more of course that is the case Ivan, what do you think about Tulip Trust? Uh, guys, you, you have I really need to read up on all of your questions. Uh, what is Tulip Trust Satoshi's stack? Okay. Uh, why do you visit Origin Trail back then? How is their progress now? Actually, there will be a video about Origin Trail today. We will be releasing or Origin Trail. Uh, you know, I, I think Origin Trail is interesting from the perspective that they have really solved garbage in garbage out issue uh, so stay tuned for that your opinion on satoshi's appearance i don't think it is satoshi i do not think that it is satoshi that account that he used on um, on the forum was hacked and there are uh, people saying that it is a hacked account i do not see that it is satoshi but you know maybe it is <laughs> what's your favorite uh What's your favorite investment out of crypto? Do you mean within cryptocurrencies? I mean, in a bear market, it is Bitcoin. In a bear market, absolutely Bitcoin. Of course, not financial advice. But uh, to me, when you know, when I read this news like from China, that they want a reserve currency, that they want to be disconnected from uh, the US dollar, uh, to me, it seems that Bitcoin really has a place in this world. And then, of course, you might have Ethereum and smart contracts, but to me, that's further away. That's really changing the internet. And to me, that's something that we will have to work on a lot. It is not done. The product, the product itself is not finished. Uh, while cryptocurrency is Bitcoin, it is finished. You can use it today. You can preserve value today. You can, uh, you know, preserve value. <laughs> you have to wait until the next bear market if you really uh, enter it in a, in a wrong way. But you realize that the, the future of bitcoin is preserving value when the market is big enough but this is something we actually talked about to, uh, yesterday that many bitcoin maximalists are tell, uh, are saying that hey bitcoin is a good store of value but really today it's not really that good i mean if you bought in november how good is that uh, store of value but yes i understand long term long term uh so that is how that is that means inflation is on the horizon. Ivan, what is your favorite coffee brand and origin? Uh, I have this, I drink this Swedish coffee, I love, what is it called? There is this p pinkish, love, berry. 
I don't I don't even know what is what is called. It's just this pink. Yeah, here, here you go. Th this one. Uh, I like this one, and you know, I really, I'm really not an expert. Sometimes it's instant coffee. Sometimes it's this one. Uh, not sponsored, but by uh, but uh, now you know. Hi Ivan, could you please shine some light on V Chain? You know, V Chain. I've seen so many things from Box Mining about V Chain. So I think you will have to ask Box Mining. He's really involved, but. Uh, I, I've seen that they have now this, uh, you know, sensors in shoes, in clothes. Uh, I haven't seen them in the actual stores uh, because they use them in, apparently, VeChain used them in an H&M store. And you know H&M is a Swedish company. Uh, I haven't seen any signals from H&M here in Sweden that they're using VeChain. Maybe it was some kind of pilot, some kind of pro pilot project, but uh, you realize that, uh, uh, who, who knows, like... When it comes to VeChain, the idea is not really to be this decentralized ecosystem. It's really how can we solve supply chain and really have a specific use case. Uh, at the same time, this industry is so young and you will see so many other VeChain-like projects. So we'll have to see. And another aspect is, of course, is VeChain token really needed? Or can the technology be used without it? Uh, let's see. Ivan, why are you not talking about investors in Bitmain are looking to cash out a... Uh, down from here Yeah, Bitmain IPO is a topic in itself. Maybe we'll cover that in another video uh, Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this and another question whether they will even succeed with their IPO I, I really doubt that they they will have a lot of steam in that IPO today in this bear market because if you look at the numbers uh, especially mining numbers, it just doesn't look good, but of course, stocks is all about the future. It's all about expectations. It's all about what can a company achieve going forward. So maybe investors will see uh, some kind of uh, opportunity in that. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Smash the like. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed the Q&A. We had some longer Q&A, but uh, this video is becoming a bit too long. And you know, people don't watch, th people don't click on long videos. So I don't want to make this too long. So people actually watch this video after the stream. Thank you so much for watching. Smash the like. Go to christmas.ivanotech.com. Use our Christmas deal for the Academy. And I'll see you all very, very soon. Have a great day and goodbye, guys. Goodbye, goodbye.